send back, send. So uh, this is if I go to slash send, question mark message equal, it will come into here, it will send JSON to this channel. Okay, so we now have three your, uh, browser windows here. The first is creating channel. So I created a channel and got that token. The second is listening. Enter my token, hit OK. Now I'm listening, and you can see it opened, but this is doing nothing, except it is polling over and over and over again. Um, and then on the third window, we go to localhost 8080 slash send, and then message equal test. It says it sent it. We don't see anything here, right? Because it's in this other window, the one listening, where we get the message. So the message event ham happened, right? And it says object, and then object data test. So let's show that by going to our channel. So we now know that this guy gets called with uh, one argument. So on message, let's call that message. That argument has a data property. So we have message.data. So I'm just going to alert that. Message received message.data. All right. So let's do that again. There we go. Message received. But look at that, it's got quotes in it. You can see that, it's a little small. So, why is it in quotes? It's JSON. Because it's JSON, so we have to JSON parse it. So. I guess you can reuse it. That's cool. Could be using the same key. If you want where I Yeah, I was a little concerned that by, you know how it's like restarting the dev server each time I change a Go file, that I thought it might clear out all the channels. But apparently it's keeping them around. So. Since, since you can reuse it, you won't wear out your clipboard. <laughs> yeah, you wear out your clipboard. I don't think you can do that. But anyway, um, yeah, as a programmer, copy and paste is like your best friend. You use it so much. Okay, so we got a message, right? So everybody understand the flow here? We create a channel, get back a token, give the token to JavaScript, he creates a channel on the client side using the token, opens it, and waits for a message, and then we send a message to the channel, and the listener can get it, okay? So, pretty straightforward. At this point, just streamlining the test and just hard code that post. Yeah. And then you have to switch tabs and I, I know you can't reuse it after you restart the server or whatever, but for this iterative thing, if you hard code it, you know, you want to switch that over and over again and pop up the dialog over and over again. Well, the, the reason I've done it this way is because connecting that plumbing uh, ends up making the code more complex. And so it's hard to just say, here are three functions and how they work when you start going down that route because then it becomes oh, well, let's take this and put it in another file. Let's take this and put it in another file. Let's make another API method. And eventually you have 20 files. And it's a better I example, just, I just but it's exactly like, where do I look at it, right? And so, so that's why I've done the plumbing manually. You right. enter it in manually, uh, because I want you to see the steps. Normally you get an Ajax request. Right, right, right. To request the whole thing, right? OK. I thought that was a great example for you. I appreciate your decisions on that. Yeah. So. So hopefully everybody can understand what we're doing here. Now we're going to do an example. Um, and the example we want to build is a chat. And the way the chat is going to work is that you come in and you open a channel and you start listening. And somebody else comes in, they open a channel, and somehow messages get sent between the two. Okay. That's what we want to build. Everybody 
everybody was saying the idea of the chat room? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you already built the chat room before, right? Uh, but now we're going to use channels to build it. Okay. Cool. Let me add this and push it up. Previous example we built can't run on Apple because it's a TCP server, not an HTTP server. It also the previous example we built didn't. Yeah, it, anyway, it gets. We can't use web sockets. We can't. It's just a. It's a problem. Um, oh, so the, the general idea is just like exposure. Learn a little bit. Yeah. No, I understand that. I'm, I'm curious, just uh, knowing, could you build? The chat room with channels in TCIP, if, even though it would, might be barrier. It's, it's an app engine yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So there are app engine channels and Go channels, and they're different. Right. Yeah. They're different, different concepts entirely. Um, it's it's pretty good in the first four minutes of the video. I'll show you. Uh, okay, so now we're going to build a chat example. I'm, what we're going to do is I'm going to build uh, some of the scaffolding, and then we're going to commit that code, and then you guys can use that as a starting place to build the rest of it. Okay, cool. Uh, because this, like I said, we're now dealing with at least three languages, and it starts to get really complicated remembering which pieces are where. Um, and, and, you know, it's interesting, this is HTML stuff, it's important, but it's not really our focus. Our focus is on this stuff. So, sort of handing you. Uh, Unstyled, ugly version, but ready to be plugged in. Okay. Um, okay. So let me walk through that. Same app YAML. The difference here, login part. I'm doing that because it's a chat room, and I want to have people have a username and stuff. So why not just use login required, and I'll get one for free. I'll get their email. So I'll just use that. Okay. So now I don't have to implement login. I'll just get that. Um, but otherwise, this is the same that was in the so what I've done is I've broken this into routes and handlers. And the idea here is that routes will just have an init with this. And then I'll put other code in the file. OK, so for the routes, this is the same you know, package chat, import HTTP. What I've done here is I'm making slash go to public. So the idea is that I'm just going to serve files. Okay. So I'm making essentially a static web server. Anything in the public folder, that's what's going to be shown. Okay, this is like running a patch. Just, just plopping this data back to the client. Except for slash API. So anything that goes slash API slash, remember the slash, if it ends in a slash, it handles everything under it. I'm going to go to this handler, okay? And we'll look at what that is. But the, the point is that I'm just serving files, except for the API endpoint that I'm doing ghost stuff. And this app we're going to build is going to be a JavaScript application with a backend that's JSON. And instead of using templates and all that, we're going to just write it in JavaScript and make calls to an API. Okay. That makes our server a lot easier to build. But, um, OK, so this is the standard file server. So let's make sure that actually works. I don't know if I actually tested this code. So. Um, So I went to slash. Now, if you don't have a slash at the end, it puts one. You always go to slash. Uh, so it's you know localhost uh, get. This is the real URL here. Um, but it went to slash. So the neat thing about the file server is he handles files. So if I went to slash main.css, I would get main CSS. But it also has a default. So if you go to slash, just slash, it's going to go to index.html. It just does that for you. So that's, I mean, I think it actually uh, says that somewhere. Um, <laughs> so index page, and if you can't find it, it like looks for the index page and adds it, okay? Uh, so 
All that to say, if you use the built-in file server, this guy, if you have an index.html and you go to slash, you get index.html. So it's like it adds it to the end of the book. Hey, yeah? Yeah? You have a slash API after the open slash. And that's okay that you do. I don't think the order matters. Okay. Now, the order does matter in the app YAML, doesn't matter in Go. Okay, so, so the, the file server, the slash, so that means the, the file we saw is this file, okay? So I created an HTML file, just call it chat example. I made a simple div, and that has this text input and a submit button, okay? And then it messages, the, the, that's where we plot messages into, okay? So if I submit this form, I want to send a message to the server, and then I want this page on load to be listening for messages from the server. So I just included main.js right here. That'll be this file. And so I wrapped API request. So this is doing the XML HTTP request. Um, I just wrapped it so that we can just use it. So that, for example, when I send a message, I just say API request, post, two messages, this object, and this call. Okay. This is a function that will be called when this completes, okay. So for example, I have my controls, I submit the form, and then I get my text from the input, and I say send message, the text, and then this is the function that gets called. And basically I'm not doing anything, unless there's an error. And if there's an error, then I say it okay. But, did we fall in the, yeah. So I submit, submit a form, and now it's gonna send a message. It sends a message by doing a post to this endpoint, slash API slash messages. Uh, it's adding slash API right here. Um, so I post this slash API slash messages, this text, and we'll call on the server. Right now, it just says not implemented, it's not implemented. These are the things we're going to implement, okay? Um, so how does this work? This API returns as a star API. Uh, it turns out the star API implements the handler interface, and that means I can use it to handle. And the re reason it implements the handler interface is because they have to serve HTTP, okay? Uh, and so that's all you need to have in order to implement it. And so what I'm doing here is I get the endpoint. The endpoint's the part after slash API slash. That's what I called it. And then the method is post or get or whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to switch on the endpoint. So if I go to slash channel slash post, I'm going to handle a post to channel. If I go to slash messages and I post, then I'm going to do that. Okay. So it comes in here, gets the endpoint method, switches. The endpoint is messages. The method is post. And then it goes to this function. Okay. And so then it calls this here. So if I change this to I just change it to handle post not implemented. I go here, refresh, and say test and submit. It says handle post message not implemented. So we just have to plug in the code to do whatever we need to do there. Everybody following the yeah. basic flow here? Right. So we need to add code here to create channels. We need to add code here to send to the channel. Right. It should be very similar to the other thing. Um, there is one complication here is that now we have multiple channels. And so somehow we need to send to all of them. Okay. But we did that in the other example. Right? I think we can get there. Okay. Anybody think that that's like crazy hard? I'll let you know in 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so I will commit this code, push it, and like I said, there may be bugs with it, but I, it's pretty simple. I mean, I hope there are any bugs. But, okay. I will add that. Once again, that is on github.com, bootcamp examples, week three, day four, chat three. So, Sweet. I will post that in week three. Any questions?
questions? No? Okay. Break time.